And uh, today I'm actually doing a local walk but it's the beginning of a massive long distance trail that I've created called the Grand Tour of Northumberland. It's 480 miles in 52 sections and there's room for a bonus section that will take us over 500 miles. It uh, starts quite local, it starts in Wylam and it finishes officially in Morpeth but the bonus section will take us through the Seaton Sluice. The walk begins at George Stevenson's cottage in Wylam. This is the birthplace of George Stevenson. Usually the cottage is closed now, but it's open today for a heritage open day. George Stevenson, um, who later went on to create and invent uh, steam locomotives. Uh, he was born here in 1781 and lived here until he was eight years old when they moved on to Julie Bird. But all the family would have lived in this single room. Um, so it was him, his mum and dad, and at the time they left Wylam there would have been five children here. Uh, so we've got a bed here where the parents would have slept and a little truckle bed there to come out for the children and a little crib for the baby. Um, it wouldn't have been quite as nice as this actually. When they lived there, the floor would have been just bare earth. Uh, there wouldn't have been plaster on the walls or any whitewash inside or out. It was just a very simple rubble and earth cottage. Um, it's a sort of fairly typical of collier workers uh, of the day. Um, uh, his father worked at Wylam uh, on one of the steam engines that helped to pump the mine clear of water. Yeah. Um, yes. But yeah, the model here shows you a bit closer to what it would be like. Uh, but outside is the wagon way, and horse-drawn carriages would take coal from the mines at Wylam all the way to the keels at, at Leamington, um, where they'd be loaded onto boats and taken down to London and to be sold elsewhere. What was the cottage called before he was born? Uh, High Street House. High Street House. <laughs> yes, yeah. They, it was built along, this was uh, sort of the road between Hexham and Carlisle and also yeah. the wagon way. Uh, and I think it might have been built as a, sort of a, a gatekeeper's cottage. Right. Uh, because there's a land boundary around here. You've got the Buicks on one side and the Blackets on the other. So I think it might have been, they might have collected tolls and things while they were here. The cottage dates from 1760 and George Stevenson was born on the 9th of June 1781. 9th of June, famous for the Bladen races. <laughs> um, he built his first locomotive in 1814 and he invented the safety lamp for the coal mining in 1815. In 1821 he was appointed engineer of the Stockton and Darlington Railway, uh, which became the world's first public railway. And that is the reason why he's known as the father of railways. In 1821 he won the Rainhill competition uh, to find the best locomotive for pulling heavy loads over distance by producing his rocket, which at the time was the fastest locomotive in the world. And it travelled at 36 miles an hour, about the same pace as Neil's driving. <laughs> 
So uh, that's the start of the walk. I thought the birth of a new long distance trail, uh, having the birth of the father of railways, kind of where went together, I thought. Blackberries are out. Yeah, you're not allowed in this. Oh, they're nice. And they're nice. <laughs> This here is the Wylam Railway Museum. Not only is Wylam famous for being the birthplace of George Stevenson, but it's also famous for William Headley and Timothy Hackworth and Jonathan Forster. He worked on Puffin Billy. These uh, replica models, that one there is Puffin Billy, which can now be seen in the Science Museum in London. It's the oldest surviving locomotive in the world. And this one is Wylam Dilly. So that was Wylam Railway Museum. How did you think of that? I'd rate that 7 out of 10. It was really good in there. Yeah. Yeah. Expectedly It's free to enter and it's uh, part of the library at Wylam. The house behind me stands on the site of the birthplace of Timothy Hackworth, who was one of the engineers who worked on Puff and Billy. So I'm busy currently walking along the old North Line. Um, the inspiration for this walk came because we were looking for something else to do after the Weirdale Way. And originally we were looking at the Reverse Way or St Oswald's Way. Um, and I was looking at the map and really like trying to plan where to do like car to car walks for like section hiking. It was quite difficult. And I was looking at the, all the places that they were missing out and it just seemed that they were missing far too much out and yes there are a lot shorter walks than the one I've planned myself but this one we, we try to get as much in as we possibly can hence the grand tour of Northumberland and we make massive loops in parts which can be cut out for anyone who wanted to take shortcuts um, but just just so that we can see various different extra features so we like snake our way around the entire of Northumberland. Um, obviously there are points where we can't do that, where it leads to a dead end or it's too difficult for car to car, um, or you have like a choice of where to go, um, which direction to take, um, sacrificing one point of interest in order to get two points of interest for example. It probably take us two to three years to complete uh, because we won't be doing it every week, but the, the walk is designed for someone who copies us to do it once a week, um, 52 sections. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good. It's going to keep uh, my YouTube channel with plenty of content, and uh, hopefully I'll get a book out of it. Uh, it'll give my blog plenty of content as well, because I've been uh, neglecting my blog. <laughs> because I've been searching for work, but uh, we need to get that sorted out. This here is Wylam Railway Bridge, otherwise known as Points Bridge or Hag Bank Bridge. It was built in 1876 and designed by WM Laws. It features in a lot of my videos because it's very local for me. I think I saw mine. No, I'm sure mine's first. I think I saw mine somewhere. There's a little bit of dispute going on about the poo sticks and who won. <laughs> My daughter claims victory. <laughs> and we're not going to argue. <laughs> because she's a brown belt in karate. This here is the Newcastle Carlisle Line. It was opened to passengers in 1835, making it one of the oldest railways in the world but still in use today. 
Um, it ran two locomotives originally, Stevenson's Rapid and Hawthorne's Comet. Neil thinks he's found a geocache, so I'm going to check it out. There it is, underneath that bit of tree. This is going to be pirate gold. Oh, it's stuck inside it. Yeah, a bit of water log. The marble. What is that? Like pasta shapes? No oh, is it moon bands? Yeah. So we found a little shell and we're going to put the shell in the box for the next person to find the geocache. And unfortunately it started raining, we're sheltered by the trees at the moment, but uh, hopefully that rain will pass over. It wasn't supposed to rain today. <laughs> Once again the weather forecast got it wrong, <laughs> they always do. <laughs> Hello guys, well camouflaged. I've already put my bag on top of them. Okay, the trail I designed heads across the road, but hidden within these trees are the remains of Wylam Colliery. There's a big hole, there's a mine shaft, it's called West Wylam Colliery. Can you see the buildings? The buildings are not here, in the trees. Prilla Castle was built by the Umpreville family between 1100 and 1121. Sadly all the good places are fenced off. Prilla Castle was the only castle in Northumberland never to have been captured by the Scots. Although it was once gifted to them in 1139 by King Stephen. However, it returned to English hands in 1151 when the Umpreville switched allegiance again to King Henry II. The house was built between 1810 and 1818 for William Laws, forms part of the entrance to the castle. So Neil, what did you think of this one? This one was really good, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, we had some damson gin and some... Oh yeah, some they had like that was nice. free tastings. <laughs> <so of bread. laughs> the building was fine as well. Uh, and we also got this from the, uh, the gift store, Top Trumps, UK Castles Edition. Awesome. Now how cool is that? <laughs> Can't wait to play it. Something I might win. Oh, look. Nearly missed then. <laughs> I actually still have student discounts, so I got in quite cheap. But to be honest, you can actually sneak into here. Easy. <laughs> These ruins down the bottom here is the site of the old mill. And the people who lived on the Improville land, they all had to pay a price in order to mill their corn here. Ovenger Bridge was built in 1883 as a toll bridge, originally for horse-drawn traffic. It remains in use today, but its narrowness is the bane of many drivers of larger vehicles.
Behind me is St. Mary's Church in Ovenjum. The tower dates from 1050 and is the tallest Anglo-Saxon tower in the Tyne Valley. However, the rest of the church is 13th century in origin. Unfortunately, the door is locked, so I can't take you inside. It's the final resting place of Thomas Buick and his wife, Isabella Buick. We will be visiting Thomas Buick's birthplace later, so more on who Thomas Buick is later. The bridge was never intended for cars and it periodically gets closed for repairs and strengthening. This is the cottage that Thomas Buick was born in, in August 1753. And Thomas Buick was one of the most celebrated engravers of his time. So this was the house that Thomas Buick was born in. The more modern house was built by his brother. This is the prince room. Cherry van. And there's an example of the prince. So that was the birthplace of Thomas Buick. And Neil? <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, good prince, good books, good coffee. We saw uh, a platypus, stuffed of course, um, it was quite tasty. Yeah, it was quite good that. But, uh, today is uh, Heritage Open Day, so a lot of the National Trust properties are free to enter, hence the reason why we came today to start the walk. <laughs> Plus, of course, George Stevenson's cottage was uh, open and it's not normally open, so you have to watch out for these uh, open heritage days and take advantage of them. At last, the sun's come out. <laughs> we're nearly at the end of the walk, though, that's the trouble. So we're in Stocksfield at the moment, and the walk finishes at Bywell. So just passing the station at Stocksfield, if anybody's doing this walk solo, you could always use the train to get back to Wylam. This here is Bywell Bridge. It was opened in 1838 and nearby once stood the remains of an old Roman bridge. But these were destroyed by Thomas Beaumont, who built the nearby Bywell Hall. This here is Bywell Castle. Unfortunately, it's on private land and it's no access to the public. Bywell Castle was originally intended to be the gatehouse for a much larger castle, but Ralph was denied permission of, to build the larger castle by King Henry III. Behind me is St. Peter's Church in Bywell. The tower is medieval, and while most of the church is 13th century in origin, 
Part of the building dates from the 8th century. Now, access to the church appears to be only on a Sunday service. Behind me is St Andrew's Church, also in Bywell. This tower is Anglo-Saxon in origin. We can enter this church. The bulk of the church is 13th century. So we've got St. Andrew on this side and St. Peter on this side. And we've got two churches in Bywell, one called St. Andrew and one called St. Peter. Bywell used to be a lot larger than it is today. The, most of the village was cleared when they built uh, Beaumont Hall because they didn't like the view of the village from the hall. Uh, the vicar of one of the churches refused to move, so they built a big tall wall in order to hide the vicarage from the view from the hall. So that ends section one of the Grand Tour of Northumberland. And how have you found the first section? Oh, really good. I'd yeah. recommend it to anybody. There's plenty to see. Um, it's an easy, well, relatively easy walk, quite yeah. flat, um, but lots to see and take in. Yeah, so I'd give this uh, 10 stars. This was a local walk for me, so it's a one I've done quite a lot. Um, the next section will take us to Hexham. So if you like the video, give me a like and don't forget to comment below and subscribe for the next adventure and share with your friends on social media and catch you on the next one.